Hey guys, what's up? So today I wanted to show you an early 20th century Czechoslovakian cobalt blue etui. And an etui is a fancy like holder for all sorts of things, including like sewing notions and cosmetics. And this particular one was made to hold a decanter bottle. And going around it with these little holes would be like little shot glasses. So these are quite pretty. You see these quite often. So a lot of people think these were made in the 20s. But there's no way in hell that these were made in the 20s because we had the Prohibition um, era. And Prohibition was passed in the United States from 1920 to 1933. Now, I believe they passed it in 1917, but it didn't um, go through all 50 states at that time. So by 1920, it actually was a pro prohibition of all alcohol. And uh, that, like, that was throughout all 50 states. So what I found out today was... An interesting thing. So before I tell you that interesting thing, let me give, it, give you a little background. So by the turn of the 20th century, we had an issue with certain people and they were known as progressives and they were progressive reformers. And so there was temperance societies and they were prevalent in the United States. So there was concerned citizens that had begun warning others about the effects of alcohol. And um, actually that wasn't new because like that, was going on since like 1826 and there was American temperance societies and they were convinced, um, convincing people to abstain from drinking. Now, not long after the women's Christian temperance union, um, pledged not only to ban alcohol and drugs, but to improve public morals. <laughs> so there was anti saloon leagues that were formed and, uh, they were formed in 1893 and eventually became a powerful political force and um, helping to pass a national ban on alcoholic beverages. Now, women were strongly behind the temperance movement for alcohol actually was seen as a destroyer of families and marriages. Men would often spend their money on alcohol, leaving women with no money to provide for their children. Factory owners also supported temperance as well because of bad work habits um, that were generally um, kept up with people that were alcoholics or people that drank alcohol. So there was people behind trying to get the government to pass prohibition. Well, they did. And the bootleggers actually prospered. So we had the mafia back then who would actually make gin and all different kinds of alcoholic beverages in their bathtubs. And I'm sort of laughing because my mother told me a story about my own family members who came from Italy and, uh, lived in New York City and were actually rum runners. <laughs> and uh, my great-great-grandmother, actually my great-grandmother, used to make booze in her bathtub and sell it, and sell it to the mafia. And she would actually uh, run from rooftop to rooftop, actually selling the alcohol for the mafia. And so my family actually was part of this criminal enterprise. And so the interesting thing I found out was in 1926, on Christmas Eve, Bellevue Hospital in New York City actually saw an influx of alcohol poisoning. And now that was nothing new because the mafia would make like witches brew in their bathtubs like my great grandmother. And uh, they would actually have very poisonous uh, like uh, ingredients in it. Not only that, the mafia would actually steal industrial grade alcohol and sell it as beverages. So the industrial grade um, alcohol was used in like the makings of certain things like gas and all sorts of public commodities that were not used to drink, but to make products. <laughs> so the mafia was really behind a lot of uh, poisonings, but the doctors couldn't understand what was going on because the symptoms were very, very bizarre. So people were coming in hallucinating and acting like like complete, absolute nuts. And so they finally figured it out. The government, because they were so angry that people were not abstaining from alcohol, decided to poison people. It turned out that they tried a different kind of new law enforcement. And by poisoning the industrial alcohol that the mafia was um, stealing and selling, they figured they'd teach the people a lesson to stop them from drinking. It turned out over 10,000 U.S. citizens were poisoned and died because of the government. The government actually 
poisoned Americans to try to teach them a lesson. Can you believe this? My God. So you find out an interesting thing every day. Now, in my opinion, I don't believe the government should have the right to actually ban any vice. Um, I don't drink and I don't do marijuana, but I don't like Big Brother telling me what to do. Um, pretty much like a nanny or a parent. I don't like that at all. As a matter of fact, if I lived in the 1920s, I would have probably been making gin in my bathtub like my great-grandmother to smite the government, telling uh, me what I should do and what I couldn't do. And especially the progressives. The progressives are very dangerous. Even in today's society, they like to ban everything. So if you have a vice that you like, like for my example, my vice is collecting antiques and buying antiques. My husband is like the government. He tries to prohibit me from buying antiques. But if I have to uh, sneak to get all these things in the house, I will. <laughs> so my husband is not going to be uh, very uh, like good at uh, enforcement. So once again, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, so the government actually killed people in the 20s to stop them from drinking. So long.